Hello artists, I am Ms. Strand and I am the art teacher at Thurgood Marshall Elementary. And welcome to my school away from school, also known as my home. I'm sitting here at my table. I am so glad to be connecting with you today. We miss you, we really do. Your teachers miss you. I miss my students. Um, we can't wait to see you again. But in the meantime, I'm really glad that we can have this chance to make art together. So I'm gonna show you an art activity, but before I do, we're gonna think about art. Let's think about art. For materials, you will need a pencil or pen and a piece of paper. You might wanna use crayons, markers, or colored pencils, if you have them. That's a bonus, but you don't need them. Could I use line paper if that's what I have? Yes. In fact, that might work really great if I'm trying to draw straight lines. Can I just use regular printer paper? Yes. What if I don't have either of those? Could I cut or tear open a Target bag and use that to draw on? Yes. I'd like to show you some illustrations from this book, Round is a Tortilla. It is illustrated by John Para, who is an award-winning illustrator. John Para grew up in San Diego, and he says that his Hispanic heritage gives him rich imagery for him to use in his illustrations. So let's keep that in mind as we look at his paintings. Round are sombreros, round is the moon, round are the trumpets that blare out a tune. Can you find the circles in this illustration? How about in this one? What shape do you see repeated in this painting? Can you count the rectangles? What colored triangles do you see? Are we looking for circles or triangles? What different shapes do you see? And what shapes do you want to use in your art? Let's review shapes. So this is called a square. No, wait, this is called a triangle. No, wait, what's this called? Yo, right, a circle, thank you. Oh my goodness, it's a square, woo! Do you know what? A square has the same length on all four sides. Yes, it's true. You can measure. It would be true. I love triangles, but I have to admit something kind of embarrassing. Sometimes I call them rectangles. I think it's because they both have the word angle in them. So I am going to try to remember that it's a triangle. A triangle has three sides, and no matter what length the sides are, it's still a triangle if it has three sides. Do we remember how many sides a rectangle has? I can't hear you. Oh, yes, yes, four, four, exactly. Hey, second graders, I can hear you. I realize that not everyone here watching is in kindergarten. But don't worry, I have some advanced drawing techniques that I'm gonna be teaching you in just a little bit. So hold tight. An oval is basically a squished down circle. Do you wanna see my trick for drawing an oval? You make a T, then I just draw curves in between, and that gives me my oval. You probably already know this. If I take a triangle and I cut off the top, now it is a shape that has four sides. These two sides angle in 
and the top and the bottom both go straight across. This is called a trapezoid. Can you say trapezoid? Here's another shape I forgot to tell you about. A diamond. Now you might just think this is a square, and it is. But if I tilt it, look at that. It's a diamond. There's a word we use for diamond. It's called rhombus. Sometimes a rhombus has uneven angles, like this. Still a rhombus. Can you say rhombus? What about this? What is this shape? Did you know that this is actually a rectangle? Even though it's really long and really skinny, it's still a rectangle because it has four sides, the angles are all the same, and the lines are straight. I'm trying to think of all the things I could turn this rectangle into. A mustache, a comb, a harmonica, sunglasses. Can you think of any other thing I could turn this into? Go ahead and tell yourself in your own private brain something I could use my imagination and turn this shape into. Maybe you're thinking of a stick from a tree. Maybe you're thinking of a flute. Maybe I could take this and fold it in half. Hmm. Are you old enough to know about a flip phone? Let's make art. I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of art materials in my house right now. So I'm gonna show you what to do if all you have is a paper and pencil. I'll also show you some things you can do if you do happen to have a few colors. I'm going to add some shading to my tree. Using the side of my pencil, I am shading in a dark triangle, then a medium triangle, and a light triangle. On the other side, I'm shading in a dark triangle and a medium triangle. Now I am adding some shading to try and blend the line between those two areas. Oops, I changed my mind. To make my balloons look three-dimensional, I'm going to shade in dark in a crescent shape, which is like a moon shape. Then I'm going to shade in a medium dark in a stripe that's going right next to that crescent shape. Then I'm blending with my finger. Sometimes I have to go back in with my pencil and add a little shading just to soften that line that goes between the dark and the medium shading. And erasing a light spot where the sun is shining on my balloon. Usually when I blend pencil with my finger, I have to go back with an eraser and clean up a little. I want to add some green, but I don't have green. I do have yellow and blue. If I'm going to layer colors, I should always start with my lighter color and then add the darker color on top. I can add extra color to add shading to this person's face. I could do the same thing to his shirt. 
instead of adding color to my mountains, I can add texture using line or pattern. Okay, artists, no more fooling around. Let's get to work. <laughs>